Um, you already mentioned winter camps, and that was something that really got me also kind of thinking again of like, um, we're talking armies here, especially in Virginia, 60,000 roughly for the Confederacy, about 80 to 100,000 on the Union side, who are all going to, they're all going to fell trees, they're building uh, cabins. Um, hey, that sounds like a huge area of land that is environmentally impacted oh, sure. Oh, sure. by these. And let's just stick with that. I mean, do you have any kind of grasp of how, how much forest is destroyed by these winter camps in Virginia and how, how impactful in general this was? Well, I, I think Megan Nelson would be better qualified to answer that. I can't think of any you know, numbers off the top of my head, but certainly there was a massive area of destruction around all these camps. I'm not the first to point this out. When you have those two large armies with the numbers you mentioned, camped in a certain area in Virginia, they comprise one of the largest, if not the largest city in the Confederacy. Mm -hmm. When you just add numbers of people living in a concentrated area. Right. And what happens during winters, I'm thinking about uh, the winter after Fredericksburg or the winter at Petersburg, mm -hmm. is that you have the entire region around those camps denuded for miles and miles out. You read about soldiers at Petersburg walking four or five miles trying to find firewood. Um, you read about soldiers in, in Fredericksburg who are actually trying to dig up stumps because it's the only wood they have. Yeah. Or, or guys who are taking apart, um, taking the wood out of fortifications because they need something to burn. Yeah. So there are these areas, these, these sort of ground zero areas, they almost look like bomb strikes out of the region where the whole environment is just completely denuded and there are nothing but stumps if the stumps are still there and there's mud and there's erosion. And as Theodore Lyman says, black crows or crows everywhere because nothing else can live in an environment like that. And when the war ends in 1865, those areas continue to exist, um, certainly in Virginia, but in other parts of the South too, certainly around Atlanta. Um, so there's a great, there's a, there's a, well, there's a great, yeah, there's a great deal of environmental damage just to the land and to the forest. And then you throw in the effects of erosion on rivers, you throw in uh, the loss of so many horses and mules to, to the war, to abuse, to the great Glanders epidemic, which takes place during the war. I mean, it takes years for the former Confederacy to build back up its numbers of horses and mules. Um, the effect, I mean, it's, it's concentric. It just affects so much in terms of the post-war South. When I read about Perryville years ago, what happened to Perryville, it's gross, but it happens, is that everybody in the 19th century is letting their hogs around. Mm. So after so many battles, the great fear of soldiers is that hogs will come and eat their bodies, which happens on certain battlefields, happens at Prairie Grove, uh, happens at Perryville. And then the hogs get sick and die. So you've got people trying to survive during and after the war with the loss of so much livestock because it's died in that manner. Mm. Concentric rings that, yeah. that start with an army being somewhere and then just spread out to infect, infect, I think, that environment and all sorts of negative ways. Right. 